Hello and welcome to this uh, Block 1 podcast on airway equipment types of endotracheal tubes, airway devices, etc. So the objectives of this podcast are to present uh, most pertinent information regarding laryngoscopes, endotracheal tubes, airway adjuncts, and to suggest references for further study. First, laryngoscopes. There's a large number of laryngoscope blades um, available and on in, and in history. Now, I've uh, chosen this um, uh, photograph from uh, Benjamin and Hagberg's airway management text to show the difference between the uh, English Macintosh blade and the standard Macintosh blade, which is kind of ironic considering that the English Macintosh blade was the original. Macintosh blade. So there are differences in the design of, um, diff of Macintosh blades. Sir Robert Macintosh invented and patented the uh, um, Macintosh blade in the 1940s and this is uh, a uh, sketch of uh, the patent um, for the, uh, the laryngoscope blade and uh, it was um, uh, labeled as an improved blade for laryngoscopy, improved over the straight blade, which pre-existed. This photograph here in sketch shows how the, uh, the evolution of the uh, straight blade into a curved blade uh, and how it occurred. And uh, if you notice, the, uh, the original publication was in Lancet 1944. Um, the uh, standard laryngoscope has uh, parts, uh, a handle, a, a hook on base, uh, a, uh, a spatula or a tongue on the blade. And um, this, uh, this design uh, is for function. Uh, a um, cartoon here shows how a uh, Macintosh blade inserted in the mouth with the tongue to the left of the blade flange gives a clear view of the glottis and um, the incorrect, improper use of the uh, laryngoscope blade results in a, uh, an obscured view of the laryngeal aperture. The Miller blade, the straight blade, has had various designs over time and this photograph shows how um, a uh, uh, poorly designed Miller blade on, uh, described as on the far left with the uh, light on the leading edge uh, gives poor lighting whereas the blades that you are familiar with and have even the disposable ones have the uh, the, the light uh, originating from uh, the other side. This um, uh, diagram from 1942 describing the uh, uh, proper use of, uh, of a straight blade that uh, has been modified to have a slight curve um, is, uh, uh, and, its, and its proper use. Um, the essence of this uh, diagram is to uh, show that how curving the distal blade uh, C, A to C on the diagram provides a more anterior view from point D which is where your your uh, eye is and uh, ironically uh, this uh, otherwise straight blade is described as a curved laryngoscope blade uh, if, uh, but of course, this was before uh, Macintosh's blade was uh, um, um, made uh, public. So this cartoon describes the proper use of a conventional uh, of a straight blade. Now, you have to keep in mind that. Uh, my training was in Canada where there were no straight blades. No one used a straight blade. The Macintosh blade was the only blade that was used. And uh, the, uh, the um, 
uh, fact of the matter is that uh, that uh, straight blades were not very popular in England either at this uh, once the Macintosh blade became available. It was uh, thought to be uh, an improvement on the straight blade. Nonetheless, this diagram uh, shows uh, the, uh, the these authors um, uh, opinion about the proper placement of a straight blade on the epiglottis. So uh, the uh, there are nuances to this and the next few slides will probably amplify on this but as you have been taught and as you have been practicing the straight blade uh, physically touches the uh, epiglottis and uh, compresses it uh, other, and uh, with uh, elevating at a 45 degree angle, similar to the lifting that takes place with a curved laryngoscope blade, you open up the glottis and have a clear view. Now, there are straight blades like Miller's and there are straight blades that have different names such as the Henderson blade. And this blade uh, has uh, some features that are kind of like the Macintosh. Uh, and it was invented by a uh, British or perhaps Scottish uh, anesthesiologist by the name of John Henderson. And this was only in the latter part of the last century, which sounds like a long time ago, but it was really only about, oh, 15 years or so. So this is one of the few... Um, publications by Dr. Henderson and it describes a slightly different technique in the use of a, of a straight blade in England where the Macintosh rules and it was called the paraglossal straight blade um, the right paraglossal approach um, and his uh, use for this was in um, difficult intubations. As you've all experienced, if an intubation is easy, you can do it any number of ways and, and even handicap yourself uh, and make it, you know, uh, you know, difficult but possible. But when you have a difficult intubation and you start uh, uh, compromising, um, it becomes more <laughs> difficult if not impossible. So, Dr. Henderson, with his modified straight blade, um, proposed uh, a modified uh, approach to uh, placement of the laryngoscope. So in the, in the late 1900s, uh, just before the turn of the century, uh, this uh, article attempted to um, explain um, the proper placement of a straight blade and if you notice that uh, in this uh, cartoon that the, the tongue is actually uh, to the left of the blade very similar to how the uh, tongue is uh, expected or supposed to be when using a curved blade. Now as I speak I have to tell you that I'm not a, a, a straight blade person. I don't, you know, the, the number of times I've used a straight blade, you know, is uh, is uh, pretty pretty low because I've become satis satisfied with using uh, a, a curved blade most of the time. And uh, likewise, you've heard uh, people say uh, that the Mac 4 is a utility blade, could be used for everything, and People have their opinions, but nonetheless, you, uh, as as consultant anesthesiologists, it's probably uh, important that you uh, can have a, a a deeper knowledge of of um, laryngoscopy than uh, most people. And it's this kind of uh, uh, 
uh, information that uh, makes you realize that there's there are uh, nuances and uh, modifications in how you might use equipment that uh, make you successful when someone else would otherwise be unsuccessful. I uh, thought that it would be interesting to present a little bit of information about this uh, uh, mysterious person, Dr. John Henderson, who I'd never heard of until, uh, you know, sometime after the year 2000, and it turned out that um, uh, he's now retired, uh, did do a fellowship in the 70s uh, at Mount Sinai and Brigham, Win Brigham Women's Hospital in Boston now. And uh, he did a, uh, you know, an earth-shattering number, uh, eight awake fiber optic intubations in 1978. So you can see that uh, he's been involved with airways from uh, way back. And in, in fact, he's uh, also uh, been involved with the uh, Difficult Airway Society and is an author uh, in um, Chapter 50, uh, in Miller Seventh edition of um, Chapter 50. Uh, and anecdotally, I can tell you that uh, he, as a, an author in, in an airway textbook that uh, some colleagues and friends of mine have written, he's, he's uh, somewhat of a difficult person to deal with. Nonetheless, uh, John Anderson uh, is a, a party person and, uh, is not, uh, and is known to, to wear a kilt. So... Leaving Dr. Henderson behind, there are other uh, uh, experts in the field, and uh, Dr. Levitan, uh, as it turns out, has been uh, 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 involved with um, teaching airway techniques and such. Um, and this excerpt is from a, his website, airwaycam.com. And uh, I thought I'd reproduce this here just to uh, emphasize his opinion as to the proper position of straight blades. Uh, and uh, in this, uh, from this um, educational source uh, on his website, it's clear that it's in, in his opinion it should be directed to the right paraglossal space. No tongue should be present to the right of the blade. Uh, that it should be inserted rather laterally and directed medially. So uh, these kind of uh, uh, things are, are uh, fairly foreign to me, but, uh, you know, for um, uh, residents in training and for people who uh, want to become expert in um, all kinds of airway equipment, this is rather important. So, uh, um, just co further or considering the, the, his suggestions, um, there are some micro movements of the, uh, of the handle and the, and, uh, the laryngoscope um, required to um, uh, expose the, uh, the uh, glottis properly. Um, and finally, the uh, tube delivery should be done using the extreme right corner of the mouth and should come up from below, below the line of sight, not using the, the, uh, the lumen of the blade, but uh, uh, alongside the blade. Here's a photograph, somewhat fuzzy, uh, and a sketch, more or less uh, summarizing those uh, those words on the previous slides. Uh, this is a video which I captured and while this is a very long drawn out intubation um, it does uh, illustrate some of these points that uh, have been um, uh, expressed on the previous slides and which I find quite interesting as I've not been formally uh, trained in uh, the uh, proper uh, use of, of straight blades. And I see many uh, uh, 
residents and nurses using straight blades, and I wonder what they see. Well, this uh, video from uh, airwaycam.com very, very clearly shows what you should see. Now, that's the right side of the mouth. What about something different, like the left molar approach? Well, here's a recent study, so in 2008, uh, anesthesiologists are, are uh, looking at um, alternative ways to uh, improve the laryngeal view. In this particular study, they um, uh, simulated uh, limited cervical movements by using a C collar and then um, um, by uh, doing the laryngoscopy two ways, a conventional way and the left molar way, with and without uh, optimal external laryngeal ma manipulation, these authors uh, found that uh, they could intubate, um, perhaps with a, a better view uh, in, in this simulated situation. Um, so this particular approach is the opposite and I've never I must admit I've never tried it but it's the opposite to uh, you know a right-handed person sweeping the tongue to the left out of the way this uh, approach um, uh, positions the, the tongue to your right. The uh, interesting thing about this is that uh, the mean time to perform laryngoscopy through the uh, uh, the um, left molar approach was 14 seconds and for intubation it was 20 seconds. Now this is what I consider to be a, a normal laryngoscopy time. Um, so um, in your uh, further study and review you should probably think about uh, uh, the uh, the proper way, some of this is uh, open to interpretation, but the the orthodox way of uh, inserting laryngoscopes and uh, expo exposing the, the glottis and there are unorthodox and new ways of uh, exposing the, uh, the glottis. Now moving on to uh, equipment, uh, the, uh, I, I showed you a, a, a schematic drawing of uh, laryngoscope uh, with its blade and its handle. Well, there's uh, uh, innovative uh, changes. Um, I have seen this uh, laryngoscope and attempted to uh, bring it in for trial. I'm not sure if it's still being made. I, I believe that it's a it's a, a rather small company. It did have some interesting uh, lighting features. It seemed to have a dual light source. Nonetheless, um, you know, the, uh, the time-honored way of, uh, of exposing the, the uh, larynx by upper airway retraction is uh, a, a technique that you will uh, uh, continue to uh, improve upon as you uh, uh, practice your, uh, your uh, skills. Uh, I think that uh, I'm going to take a break uh, and uh, divide this uh, podcast up into uh, bite-sized pieces. Um, and uh, uh, I'll resume this uh, podcast in, in part two.